on news you can use. This is going to be an interesting kind of run that we're going to be doing here. Um, and this is a new source. Normally, I, I will use regular sources that I've got a lot of experience with in terms of the, the data that we gather and present to you. This is a new source called Naked Capitalism. Uh, I have not verified everything here, although I've taken three or four of the, the headlines and verified, and it's very interesting and shocking news. Um, and this is going to be specifically with regard to the housing bubble and also how the, the numbers get manipulated by the, the mainstream real estate community. And we're going to talk about that just in a second. Uh, the, the, the headline of this article is housing bubble getting ready to pop. Unsold inventory of new houses spikes to the most, by the most ever, to the highest level since 2008 with a nine-month supply of houses on hand. Uh, the subtitle is Sales Collapse at Housing Prices Below $400,000. Let's get into the numbers here. We can see what this, uh, what this is showing us. Okay, make sure we're all clear and on, on target here. All right, um, sales of new family homes in April plunged by 16.6% from March and 27% from a year ago to a seasonally adjusted average of 591,000 houses, which is the lowest since the lockdown uh, April, 2020. Now it varies a lot by region. This is kind of interesting. Uh, if you look at the South, they have this divided into the, the US divided into kind of four areas, South, Midwest, West, and Northeast. The South had a 37% sales drop year over year, Midwest 25.5%, the West Coast, the Western third of the United States 12.4, but the Northeast actually increased uh, sales by 17.1%. Why is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, when you dig into the numbers a little bit, we have to look at pricing and how that affects it. And so what happened is in the South, prices went up by 53% year over year, Midwest 39%, the West 8.4%, and the Northeast for the year have dropped 4%. So is there a correlation here between prices dropping and sales going up? Absolutely. And that's what happens when you start entering into these troughs. Uh, unsold inventory of new homes spiked to a historic month-to-month -month, uh, levels. There was a gain just from March to April of 34,000 houses. And from April this year, going back to April last year, there was 127,000 more homes on the market than there was a year ago. That is the largest single monthly and yearly uh, increase in number of unsold houses ever recorded since the time they started doing this thing. So we all think back to the 2008 recession and you know the great uh, recession type thing in all those years. And we think, oh, you know, the bottom dropped out of the market. It's already happened. Uh, and people are starting to talk about it. A lot of the headlines you're starting to see, you know, stuff's not selling, uh, you know, all kinds of things are happening. When you dig a little bit deeper, it's, it's pretty interesting because it is very price sensitive. So the subheadline bottom fell out of uh, housing sales when prices were under 400,000. So they looked at this thing and sales in the 400 to $750,000 range were flat year over year. So in other words, the same number of homes sold both years. But when you get to the three to $400,000 range, 42% drop in sales, the 200 to $300,000 range, 71% drop in sales, and the below 200,000 price market, dead. It's, it fell off almost 100%. In other words, if they sold 100,000 homes uh, previously, it's down to 1,000, 2,000, that kind of thing. It's in the high 90s percent drop. So we've been telling you, stay away from those marginal, you know, super high, super low housing prices uh, markets. Um, the first one that died already is that very, very low price stuff. So be very careful about that. Um, and then when you start looking at, we talk a little bit here about how these numbers are manipulated. Ashley's is going to put something up here on the screen and we'll show you how this thing works. And this is how the mainstream media gets you to believe that the prices are still going up, things are great, blah, 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 especially Zillow and the National Association of Realtors. Sorry if you guys are members, 
of the NAR, but they're the biggest book cookers out there besides Zillow. So look at this chart. So let's say you had nine houses that sold. And the way that you get a median price, and that's how all this stuff is judged, it's based on the median price. So when you had a median price, um, you have nine sales, you take the fifth from the top or the fifth from the bottom, and that is your median price. So what happens is, in this particular example, on the left side here, you can see the median price is 400,000. Now what happens if what we just saw happen, happens? or it's happened. So the lower priced sales, the 200 and the $250,000 sales go bye-bye. Those don't happen. The other seven sales still happen. Now you had an artificially raised median goes up to $450,000. So all these talking heads, National Association of Realtors and Zillow in particular, they'll go out and say, look, our prices are up. You know, everybody's overbidding this stuff. It went from 400 last year to 450 this year. BS. I'm calling... BS on that deal right now. This is how these numbers get manipulated. This is exactly what has happened uh, in all areas. Now, the only area that I think where you've got legit numbers is the Northeast quadrant of the United States. And it's because their prices actually dropped earlier, a year ago, they were dropping while everybody else was, you know, we're getting 1,600 offers over ask price, some of them for a million dollars over. And by the way, I caught these guys a week or two ago, they printed an article that said there had been a sale recently that was a million dollars over ask. Well, what they did, this was, I think, CNN, and somebody else was working with them. They reprinted the article and changed the date from January to a current date last week. And they made it sound like it was something that just happened. It's, this is phony BS crap, and they're trying to make you believe that these markets are still going up and there's lots of sales and, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's not true. The thing is already flattened out. It's on the verge of falling off the cliff. It's a perfect time for you guys to be in this market. We're seeing it in our housing businesses on a daily basis out there right now, we're getting more and more motivated sellers. They're willing to offer you huge discounts. They're willing to give you terms. They're willing to let you pay over time. The, the situations that create a desperation in a seller's mind, which are things like death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, that happens 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, all the time. And you still get people in those positions and they're willing to sell to get out from under their payment. Remember, motivated seller is defined by somebody who has to move or has one of those other issues or somebody who's like, you know what, I don't care if I walk away from 100,000 equity. I can't afford next month's $926.18 payment. That's what I'm worried about. I don't want to make that payment. That's where you guys, by using what we teach, using your brain, get out there. You're able to get a lot of this product cheap, um, and you're able to ride out any downward trends, and you'll be able to monetize this thing. The, the people who made the most money on the last deal were the guys that were in first uh, when it was peaking at 2006 and seven. And then the guys who got in right at the bottom and rode that thing back up in 14. You're in that peak right now. We're in that 2006, seven period. And I believe there's gonna be at least another year now. I, I thought it might only be six months. I think it'll be a year um, where you're gonna have good opportunities to make a lot of money uh, flipping houses and all the different ways you can do them. All 15 ways that we teach to buy, 15 ways we teach to sell, you can do them all. It's not just cash, cash, although cash, cash will get you even more, get you bigger checks. So keep your eyes open, bring them here. We can help you do this thing. Don't believe what you read in the papers. Don't believe what you see on the internet. Find out, put it in your own, in your mind. Where's that source? What am I, what am I seeing here? What ax do they have to grind? What dog do they have in the fight? Because most of these people, in the case of Zillow, they stuck themselves uh, and they use this computer ate my homework excuse where they ended up buying billions of dollars of houses over the market, chum the market, brought their own things up uh, price-wise, and they're trying to talk the market up so that it goes down gently and they're able to exit their inventory situation without having to go uh, crazy in terms of discounts to reduce their losses. Uh, one other piece of information, a, a good friend of mine is, uh, was the national Western National Director for Fannie Freddie uh, Dispo Network asset sales. Asset sales are the, the entities that when the bank gets the property back, 
They're in charge of disposing of them. Typically, they sold them in bulk to banks who then liquidated them out. This is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 type thing. She told me yesterday that the market, uh, they, they are out there now hiring more and more people. They're looking for asset managers. The ads are out in Indeed and all these places, and they're bringing asset managers on like crazy. Why would they do this? Well, they're expecting that these foreclosures are actually the predecessor to the foreclosure, which is the forbearances. These forbearances are not getting satisfied. So people didn't pay their bills for two years. The government said, it's okay. You don't have to pay. We feel bad because you may or may not have had COVID and you don't have to pay. And now they're at the end of the rope. They renegotiated and they popped those renegotiated payments. They're going right to foreclosure. The bank is going to get those back. In a lot of cases, it's Fannie and Freddie who underwrote, guaranteed 85% of that loan amount. Those are the people who are going to end up with all of this product back. You guys have the chance by getting in before it goes to auction to buy those houses subject to, and remember, those houses typically have a low price loan, low interest rate loans, and they have a ton of equity. And these are sellers who are like, screw this. I've lived here for two, three years free. You know, I didn't have to clean the house for two or three years. I can just walk away, you know, because the government will make it, oh, it's not going to hurt your credit and all. Yes, it will. But no matter what, there's going to be houses that are, people are going to go out the door. And they did this uh, 15 years ago when this thing started in 2007. People walked out, they threw their keys on the counter and told the bank, come get them. I'm done. And we're starting to see that happen now. So more and more foreclosures. You're going to be able to buy them cheaper. You're going to be able to keep them by making the payments. And uh, you guys should be able to make a decent profit. Probably the best. I, I've only seen this one time before in 2006, where you can literally go out and make six figures on every deal if you get the right deals and you keep your eyes open. Uh, just go out there and do it. There is a lot of money to be made out there right now. All right. That's news you can use for today. Uh, thanks for listening to my rant and rave, especially and apologize for you NAR members. Uh, but I do believe they cook the books for their own benefit. And why wouldn't they? If I was in that position, I'd probably do the same thing. All right. Uh, that's it for news you can use. Let's go ahead and